First Thessalonians chapter 5, 19. Are you there? First Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. However, test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain or abstain from every form of evil. Now, I'm going to continue our series, our teaching. Again, last week we did it almost like a Bible study, and, I, and I've, I've relegated myself to under, in trying to impress you with my preaching. I'd rather you understand what the Word is saying. Amen? So we talked about, we established last week that the office of the prophet and the prophetic is clearly a gift in the church. Regardless of what your denomination or somebody's denomination says, based upon the inherent scripture, please go back uh, to, the, to our timeline on Facebook or YouTube and go back and watch as I explain through the Bible why and what God says about the prophet ministry in the church. Now, there's other ministries, but we're focusing on the prophet and the prophetic. So we saw, just a quick review, Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible says, he that descended, talking about Jesus, also did what? He ascended, amen. And he's now seated on the right-hand side of glory. He is the head of what? The church. And, and he now ministers to the church through what's called the fivefold ministry, amen, the Holy Spirit, but through men as the points of contact, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. The, the argument was is that Jesus added these to the church. So if the prophet ministry ended in the Old Testament, how did, how did Jesus give the gift to the church? Because Jesus is the head of the New Testament, of the New Testament church. Jesus, as we understand him as the Son of God, was not revealed in the Old Testament. He was there, but he wasn't revealed. The Bible says a child was born, a son was revealed. So Jesus, after post-resurrection, Amen. Took his claim, amen, his seated position as the eternal son of God. Amen. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's the head of the church. And as a result of his seated position, he's over all the administration of God. Everything is under his feet. And now being the administrator, amen, the chief magistrate of God's kingdom, he gave gifts, amen, to sustain the work of God in the earth. And these ministry gifts are relegated in five. There's other, but five in Ephesians 4. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Now, some churches or some denominations, for whatever reason, take out the apostle and take out the prophet and say we have only evangelists, pastors, and teachers. However, there is no biblical foundation for that at all. Amen. We talked about that they've used the scripture where it says that that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That is true. But we explain that, that the foundational apostles are the original 12. Amen. Amen. The foundational prophets are the Old Testament prophets. However, we saw in Scripture there were other apostles. There also were other prophets. They just are not foundational. Amen. No one ever can take their status. Right? We all are under the inherent word of God. Paul is the authority. I don't care how many dreams or visions I have, I have to submit all of us to that word. That's right. That's right. Amen? So they are the foundational. But the ministries still continue. We saw Acts 11, Acts 21, in the New Testament, in the church, prophets, certain prophets, the Bible actually called them that, by a leader by the name of Agabus. Y'all remember Agabus? Agabus came down the first time and prophesied about a famine that was coming to prepare the church. It's like the Lord gave me that dream and came to me in a dream and told me COVID as a pandemic would last three years. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the prophet ministry still continuing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But nobody, it doesn't mean nobody's an Ezekiel. Nobody's another, a, a, another John. Amen. But that ministry or that type of ministry still continues. They just have the authority over it. Amen. If you will, they're sort of the founding fathers. Right. Hallelujah. How are y'all getting this today? We also established in 1 Corinthians 14, if prophecy and prophets are not for the church or for today, why would they spend an entire chapter giving direction to the church of how prophets are supposed to function in the church and how the gift of prophecy is supposed to function in the church if it doesn't exist in the church? I said this last week. It's like being in some remote location in the world 
and, and someone's trying to convince you airplanes do not exist, and as you're talking, one flies over. It's the same thing. We say this doesn't exist, but it's happening right in front of you. Hallelujah. That's the same way they did Jesus. They, you can't do this. He's sitting there doing it. Amen. He's, he's raising the dead right in front of them. But they were so staunch in their false ideology, they couldn't see the things of the Spirit. Thank God our eyes are open. Now, there's hundreds of churches, thousands, maybe millions of churches that believe after this nature. But I believe part of my assignment is to get you in the Word and to give you clear scriptural foundation and understanding of this. It's one thing to be able to operate in it. It's another thing to be able to explain it. Amen. So right here it says, quench not the spirit. He associates quenching the spirit by despising the prophetic or prophecies. So we understand throughout Scripture that the prophetic element of it, of the gifting of God, is always, somebody say always, always, always a proof or an evidence that the spirit is moving. It doesn't mean there's not fake. It doesn't mean you got fake with anything. Hallelujah. You got real police officers. You got fake ones. You got real lawyers. You got fake lawyers. Every, every, amen. Just because there's fake doesn't mean it counteracts the real. Hallelujah. Turn to your Bibles really quick. For time's sake, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're going to go through this, can we? Hallelujah. Any of you said no, I was going to do it anyway. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Look what it says here. Verse 1, pursue love and what? Desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So why would God tell you to desire something that you can't have? God is telling you to desire. Why? Because that gift is used to build, is one of the gifts used to build up the church. So prophecy is for believers. It's for the, it's for the congregation. Amen. In, in respect to the Word of God, of course. The Word of God is the framework of everything, the foundation of any move of God, the inherent Word of God. Amen? It doesn't change. But thank God the Word still has life, and the life of the Word is the prophetic. The prophetic, amen, is, is the Word of God in action. Hallelujah. It's the Word of God moving among His people by a divine gift by God. That doesn't mean, watch this, that we don't test it. That doesn't mean we don't prove it. That's what the Bible says. We still hold it accountable. Every person that prophesies over you doesn't mean it's God. Some people prophesy, lie. Or some people get in their flesh. Or they emulate or imitate what they saw somebody else do. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Our, our responsibility is to have accountability and discernment. Hallelujah. But it is a very vital gift and gifting for the edification of the church. Look what he says, for, for verse 2, 1 Corinthians 14. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mystery. The whole text is about spiritual things. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. We also established last week that prophecy and preaching are not the same thing. Absolutely not. Remember, the Bible talks about a woman prophesying. I think it's very interesting and hypocritical how men can, can, can manipulate the Word of God. They will teach and say, well, a woman can't preach. But the same people will say that preaching and prophesying is the same thing. But then the Bible talks about a woman should prophesy but with her head covered. Well, if, pre if preaching and prophesying is the same thing and you said a woman can't preach, that means you're also saying she shouldn't prophesy, which tells us they are different things. Hallelujah. Preaching as we know it today, in many cases, is learned. Amen. Pro the prophetic is not learned. It's a gift. Hallelujah. It's just a flow of God. It's a move of the Spirit, spontaneous and episodic as the Spirit wills. Hallelujah. On a side note, most of the problem, especially with men, I'm a man, been one my whole life. That means a lot nowadays. Hallelujah. It's the only thing I know is being a man. And all I ever would know is being a man. Hallelujah. But one thing that can be works against a man, 
when he gets saved, he gets in his head. Some reason men think knowledge is moral. The more knowledge or more theological, the moral. It feels like righteousness to them because it's tantalizing their analytical mind. But God is not mind. God is spirit. And men try to study their way to God instead of learning how to commune and work with God. Because you don't deal with God with your mind. That's how you do your work. You deal with God with your spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus said the true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. You have been born again. Your spirit man has been regenerated. Hallelujah. Your body is the temple or the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost where he bears witness in your spirit, Romans chapter 8. 